All right, today I wanted to walk you through how to increase conversion rates inside of Google Ads. Conversion rates are one of the most important aspects of a successful campaign, and I see this a lot inside of campaigns that they may be generating a few leads a month, but they could, they have the potential to generate a lot more. And these are the ways I would go about increasing the conversion rate inside your account. So to start it off, it would be the actual keyword, uh, which I find one of the most important aspects. Um, a lot of people just go, oh, landing pages affect conversion rates. It's like, yeah, they do, but keywords are also very, very important. Uh, one thing to think about is the actual intent of the keyword and how far down the uh, buying funnel it actually is, or buying intent funnel, I should say. And that if you just type in, let's say you're selling pools, and then you just type in pools or in-ground pools as a keyword, right? This could be a lot of things. People are just looking for images of in-ground pools. People are just looking around. Uh, but if you have pool installation companies near me, it's a different type of intent and one that signals a higher percentage uh, likelihood that they're going to buy. So this is a very important thing to keep in consideration when looking at conversion rates because the higher the intent, the more likely they are to buy your product or you know get a quote from you or leave an email address. Um, it's very, very important to get your keywords in line and make sure they are high intent. The next thing is phrase and exact match. Uh, I generally stay away from broad match. There are a few times we'll use it, especially if we can't find keywords, uh, but that's generally in the first week or two and then we get rid of it all together. Uh, phrase and exact match are really want, where you want it to be at. Uh, they allow you to have more control over the actual keywords you're gonna be appearing for and where your ads are going to place for uh, than if you're using broad match. Broad match, if you type in uh, in-ground pool companies, it can pop up for anything. It could be DIY in-ground pool companies, uh, tips and tricks for in-ground pool companies, just literally anything you can think of. Phrase match could also do that, but less likely. Uh, phrase match is a better idea of the intent behind the keyword. Uh, not being that doesn't mean there won't be some errors, but it's a lot better. Uh, exact match is generally exactly what you type in. It's gotten a, lot, a little bit more lenient over what you can appear on lately, uh, but it's still a very, very good thing to have high control over your campaign and make sure you maintain high conversion rates through months and months of your campaign being active. Uh, the next thing is continuous optimization. So sometimes a campaign right out of the gate can be just, you know, come screaming out of the gate, doing absolutely phenomenal, you know, 30 or 40% conversion rates and you're just, you know, super happy. Other times you could do 10, 12% just because uh, luck of the draw, you didn't get it. And uh, unfortunately, it's not as good as it should be. So what you have to do in every single campaign is continuously optimize. And one of the ways you do that is look through your actual search terms. So in Google Ads, you have your keywords and then you have a little bar below that as the search terms. These are the actual keywords people have typed in, not the exact, uh, not under keywords, this is under search terms, so that's very, very important to understand. And these are the words people have typed in in Google to, and your ad has popped up for. Uh, these are very good to go in and either add to, if it's a winner, you can add it to another uh, ad group or the same ad group or add it to a negative if it's a bad keyword. Uh, and this just goes on and on and on for weeks and weeks and months and months and forever, uh, essentially however long you run the uh, campaign for. And that's just continuously optimizing, finding good keywords and getting rid of the bad keywords. Uh, add, like I said before, another thing is adding keywords to newer existing ad groups. You want to continuously add winning keywords. The more winning keywords you can add, the better the campaign will perform because Google has more options to pick from in terms of uh, what ads are going to be, or sorry, where they can place your ads. And the more place they can place your ads, uh, the better because you can get more leads through it. So continuously expand your ad groups slowly but surely don't you know go crazy but add new keywords add new ad groups that are you know themed so you can easily control it um, but that that is very very important continuously expand your account over time so it has more things to do and it can spend money in different places or wherever Google's AI feels fit to spend it for the best results uh, like I said before add negatives uh, make sure if there is uh, anything related to competition, anything related to cheap, in most industries, you just want to you know, cut it all out. If you have a competitor pop up, and I've seen this before, and I've actually been asked by customers, can you place my ad in front of in one of our competitors? So they'll click the, the uh, individual who's searching for this company will click on our ad instead of theirs. And the 
the idea behind it is like, oh, well, we'll steal our competition. The issue with that is people who click on those ads generally get upset because they're like, hey, I was searching for another company. Why did I end up here? And they just exit out and it's a waste of money. Or they'll actually call you, think it's another company, then hang up and go to the other company. So really, it's not worth doing. Uh, anything related to cheap discount or anything like looking for a low quote, I also get rid of right off the bat just because we want high quality leads. We don't want people like looking for the lowest quote around. We want high quality. Uh, we want our customers to be offering, you know, guarantees, high quality work, uh, but in return also getting paid for it. They don't want to be, you know, uh, brought in all the way down from like a good price point to just barely making any money because the customer just wants the lowest quote possible. Uh, the next thing would be ad copy. Some people disagree with me on this and that's okay. I don't care. Ad copy to me is also a very important thing and it really comes down to message match. If you have an ad that has nothing to do with your landing page, your customer is more likely to leave, which impacts conversion rate overall, making them less likely to call you or leave an email um, for you. So that's very important. A lot of people will say like, well, ad copy, you know, it, it affects click through rate. It doesn't affect conversion rate. And in all honesty, I don't believe they know what they're talking about. So I'm going to go with my opinion on that. Um, and I think it's the right opinion. But uh, yeah, so ad copy is also very important, in my opinion. Another thing about it, there's a few things about ad copy. You want to solve the person's problem. You don't you need to understand that everyone has a problem that they're trying to solve. And a lot of ads will just essentially boast about how great the company is. Like we've been in business 30 years. We're awesome. We're the best. And it's like, yeah, that's great. But how does that solve my issue? If I'm the customer, I have an issue. So say my furnace is broken. Who am I going to, what ad am I more likely to click on? The one that says I'm the best company ever, or the one that says, Hey, is your furnace broken? We can have a guy out here and, you know, an hour and we guarantee we can solve the problem. And if we can't, we'll do it for free or whatever, something like that. You're going to go with the one on the, the ladder just because it speaks to you more. It's like the person is reading your brain and you're like, yeah, that person knows what I'm about. They have, they, they understand the problem, right? Um, if the company just boasts about themselves, it's like, why, why am I going to click on it? They might click on it, but chances are it's not going to have as high click through rate as if you're really speaking to the person. And that's one of the reasons you really want to have themed ad groups. So you can have very uh, targeted ad copy for each ad group. Uh, therefore, you can have a higher click through rate, which also helps with quality score, meaning you get a lower cost per click and also generally a higher um, or sorry, a lower cost per click then in turn leads to a lower conversion or sorry, a lower cost per lead, which is also another great thing. Another thing was, I mentioned this a little earlier, getting rid of anything related to cheap. So I see a lot of ads like lowest cost or lowest quote or like the discount or 50% off. You really want to understand who your customer is and what customer do you want to attract? Do you want to attract someone with the lowest, you know, looking for the lowest quote who's going to, you know, try and nickel and dime you and get every single cent out as they can? Or do you want someone who has a problem and they're willing to pay, you know, extra money to get it solved right now? Uh, chances are they want to go with the latter, most companies. So when you write your ad copy, I generally stay away from like discount, lowest quote, uh, I, I put guarantees, uh, get a quote right now, instant response, stuff like this, uh, we'll fix your problem today, stuff like that to indicate that we're targeting this one type of customer. And if another company wants to go for lowest quote, let them, uh, we don't want those customers. And it's very important to know who your target audience is and go after them, uh, aggressively. Another thing is you should always be AB testing ads. I see this with people who or even accounts that people really don't take care of or people who have just started, they don't really put many ads. They'll put like one or two. And then uh, if the campaign's running poorly, they're like, oh, why is it not running? It's like, how many ads you got? Well, one, it's like Google needs a plethora of, you know, ads so it can A-B test, figure out which one's running. Well, uh, keep in mind, like most ads are going to be losers. You just have to constantly come up with new ideas and keep A-B testing and eventually you'll find a winner. It's great because then you can develop a high click-through rate. The higher the click-through rate, like I said, higher quality score, lower cost per click, uh, lower cost per lead. And it's, it's very, very good because you also pop up in front of other ads that you wouldn't have otherwise popped up in front of because you have the higher ad quality score, which could affect conversion rates overall, if I'm being honest. Uh, but yeah, so ad copy is very important. Um, 
it is very it is something you should definitely look into when considering conversion rates and if your campaign isn't performing as well as it should be. The next thing is landing pages. <laughs> this is really the cream of the cop, crop when it comes to uh, conversion rates. I think it's second behind ad copy because I think you could still have a pretty crappy landing page, but if you target good keywords, you can get away with it. Uh, that being said, I don't want to try that. I'm cool with having both good landing pages and good keywords. So on landing pages, really what it comes down to is not making your customer think and delivering what they want. So if you said we can fix your furnace problem, expand on that. So you could say furnace services near uh, name of city that you're located in, uh, guaranteed uh, fix, you know, 24 seven, or open 24 seven. And these are all like little points listed below. And then on their, your right side, so you could have the title, your bullet points and on your right side, like call now or email us for uh, instant response. You really wanna keep it sim simple. So don't put too much stuff. Give them a few reasons why they should you know, call you, but don't overdo it because the more information you give them, uh, you're gonna, it's called cognitive overload. And what happens is people take in so much information that they essentially seize up and they would rather just go back to whatever else was easier. So they'll back out of the page and go find something else because it's just too hard to process. So keep it very simple. Another thing is message match with the ad that they clicked on. So if your ad says furnace repair and then they go to a landing page and it has nothing to do with furnace repair, uh, chances are they're more likely to leave uh, instead of if it was actually about furnace repair. So make sure the message match is the same. You wanna keep it as consistent as possible so it's a uh, easy customer journey for your customer or potential customer. Uh, another thing is, like I said, keep it simple. One or two calls to action at the most. You don't wanna have like, uh, text message us, call us, email us, uh, you know, visit us. Like, what do I have to do to get my problems solved? Give me one, maybe two at the most. Email or phone call I find works the best. Don't give them 28 ways to contact you or fax us. Like, no one, like, just give them one or two ways. If they need another uh, way to contact you, they'll either Google you or they'll actually call you up and then ask about other ways to contact you. They're not, they don't need 48 different options. And if you give them 48 different options, they're going to, like I said at the beginning, cognitive overload, they're going to seize up. They're going to be like, ah, I'll just go somewhere else. I don't know what to do. Uh, I've actually seen people with multiple emergency numbers on their top right corner. It's like, okay, which number do I call? Like, there's three of them. It's just, it's very annoying. It's like you're literally losing customers because you couldn't just pick one number. I don't know, but some some people uh, aren't very good at design. Let's just believe it at that. Uh, give them reasons to buy, not reasons why you're awesome. Like I said, back in the ad copy, constantly boasting about yourself and why your company is great is not the way to sell. The way to sell is finding your, prob uh, your customer's problem and then giving them a way to relieve the problem or fix the problem. Uh, so if you have furnace repair, it's like, it's simple furnace repair services. We can fix your furnace in 24 hours or something simple like that. It's like, okay, perfect. I can go with that guy. My problem is going to be solved. If, especially if I have a broken furnace, uh, again, just don't give them, don't boast about your company and oh, we're so amazing. Like it's, it's not going to work and you'll have a much lower conversion rate on it. Uh, like I said, with the ads, AB testing, uh, you can also AB test with landing pages. It's very important always try to be optimizing landing pages, even if it's like 0.2% increase or 0.5% increase in uh, conversion rates. Over time, it'll build and build and build and your conversion rates will be very high. Things to keep in mind overall, uh, proper tracking. Uh, this is especially uh, very relevant with Google's AI. So if you're running an automated bidding strategy, if you don't have proper tracking, it's going to take forever. Well, it won't optimize because Google won't have the data, but uh, you need proper tracking to allow Google's AI to optimize, figure out which keywords are running well, and then allow it to make adjustments in order for it to have higher conversion rates and have you and generate you a lower cost per lead. So proper tracking is also something to keep in mind. Another thing is bidding strategy. Um, you need to feed data to Google's AI in the first couple months or however long it takes to get, you know, 25 to 50 leads uh, in Google system. And then you can let it take over and uh, allow Google's AI system to optimize. And with that bidding strategy and automated Google, uh, an automated bidding strategy through Google's AI will outperform a human, but it needs the data up front. So that's another thing that can affect conversion rates. 
especially if you don't give it the data at the beginning, which is, I, I've done another video on this, um, but it's very uh, good to also run an automated bidding strategy later on, especially once you have the data, because your conversion rates will uh, generally increase and you'll see better results. So hopefully that gives you a good idea of what you should be doing to increase conversion rates inside Google Ads. If you have any questions or concerns or comments, leave them down in the description below. I'd love to answer that them. Uh, other than that, you guys have a wonderful day and take care.